episode of Rest of the Barrage. And in this awesome episode, we are going to sweat to death. Now, we're not going to sweat to death. The AC is kind of running, but it's hot. But we're getting right into what we're doing. We're putting the engine in the car. For the last time, no, no, no. It's got to go one more time. But I need to know where to put this thing in there. We kind of know, but we don't know. So I need to be able to establish a tunnel. You know, the tunnel, not the drive through, but you put the transmission in. Okay, I need a tunnel. <sighs> Maybe one with lights. No, not one with lights. Anyways, we're about to slam the old big block in the old holes wheel. That's what we're getting ready to do. And then, and then, we're going to establish where the tunnel goes. I'll run metal down there. I'll bring you guys along for that, okay? I'm not even going to explain it right now. The other thing we're going to do is the steering. Steering is important for ish. We need to be able to, you know, drive her to the grocery store. So we got the plans in this episode to knock out the steering and be able to turn that. And um, with any luck, we may even do something else. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. But anyways, you're not going to want to miss it. Just stay tuned. We're going to slam her in there, and then we'll see how much room we got. Sound like a plan, guys? It's a plan. Bodies on it. Before we had this engine in here, you might want to come around the pole. There's plenty of room here. Oh, now yeah. you're. I mean, we got ample room. Ample. Tons of room there. Okay. Good deal. I'll go on the other side. Lots of room for the transmission. This is what I meant about having to cut these out. So now I know where this is going to be at. I'm going to run a piece of one by one all the way from up here, and it's going to come right down through, chung, 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 all the way back to there, and all the way back to there, and that's going to establish um, our tunnel width coming down through here. And then I can now take and build the loops and tie in um, where the tunnel you know needs to be run down. Through. So we got a better idea what that is. The other thing too is now I can establish the footboard. Once that comes in, the tow boards, I can establish this, this crown and I can fill in this whole tow board. Every time, every time. So I can establish the tow boards now because I know where they're gonna come to here and to here and I can do all that. So literally I have a ton of work to do in here. Now, that can be done. So, I gotta do some thinking and some laying out. Uh, but I'll bring you all back when I get some, some plans going up here in the old head. But, motor transmission's in. And, uh, I mean, we can see this is what the drive shaft's gonna be. We can air the suspension up. and kinda get an idea where that's all gonna be. Awesome sauce! So, excited. It's coming together.
It never cools down here in Alabama. Ever. You know how much I could get done if I could keep a nice cool shop? Like it under 80. I mean, I could probably build a whole car in one day. But anyways, I know this looks extreme. That's because it is. It's extreme. But I mean, when you got the drive shaft, which is actually down a little bit now, but you got the drive shaft coming through right here all the way down, you know, you don't really have a choice. Somebody wanted to bag this car. So, this will end up being the tunnel. I do got to do some work to get into here. I haven't quite figured out this part yet. This is the back seat area, but we'll work through that after we work through the front part. Um, I built some tow boxes. Uh, there you go. They're just um, self tapered in now. We'll get into a little more detail on those in a little bit. But I just took some uh, 18 gauge and cut it, put a couple bends in it, and self tap it in to get me my established where it needs to be and uh, so now I can lay my top piece on and that'll establish where I got to go in to the firewall and then I can do my angle pieces and that lets me be this lets me have the console uh, eventually you know there'll be a couple cup holders probably right here and here a couple cup holders I mean I know it's a little bit big but I, I got plans I think it's gonna look really cool with a big console I think. Or it will look stupid. I mean, it will be one or the other. But I'm okay with either way. In my brain, it works. That's really all that matters. I guess I better keep going before I just melt into the floor. So I'm thinking. But she's good and sturdy. I'll give her that. <sighs> well, hey, y'all. We are currently um, welding these tow boards in, kick boards in, all the boards. This ain't welded in. That's just there. Kind of, kind of just split what we're doing here. But we did get the tunnel in. Now, I know this tunnel seems big. It's because it is. It don't really need to be this big. Technically, I could have slendered it up a little bit. Um, well, not in the front. It has to be that wide in the front. I could have brought it back in here and, and brought it in. But I kind of wanted this look of a big, wide center console down through the middle of the car. And, uh, I mean, I do need it. Realistically, there's only, once it's finished, there's only about an inch and a half of drive shaft space at the top and on the sides because the bags are kind of coming down. So, really, I need to be about that wide in the back. And I got to be this wide in the front. Um, so, I mean, it's really only, I think it's only like two inches wider in the front than the back. So, I weren't going to save, you know, much. I could come in here and do something. But I kind of wanted this look. Because I'm going to connect the dash in here. We're going to put the gauges in here and stuff. And you got all the shifter all in this area. And then this is kind of a good spot right here for the couple cup holders built in. And, of course, the seats. And then you'll have the back seats. And then you can put a couple cup holders there. So, I mean, it, it's just going to be a different look. But we got some plans. So, we are going to wrap it in metal. I'm getting ready to um, cut that in next, actually. Um, but when we're finished, our plan is to actually cut wood. On the CNC, we'll cut some wood that will actually go on the sides and the top. Okay? And then we're going to wrap all that in leather. And then we can put those in. They'll be about, I don't know, it'll be like quarter inch thick or something. And uh, we'll run that on the sides. And we can screw in from the tunnel. And uh, so it'll have like a great big leather console with cup holders in it. It'll be pretty nice in here. I mean, the inside of the car won't really reflect the outside of the car. That's kind of what we're thinking. Because we're going to paint until the dash and stuff. Now, we're not putting a headliner in. And we're not putting carpets in. But it, it's still going to be pretty nice looking. So that's why it is going to be different. And uh, so, yeah, it is a big tunnel, but um, there's plenty of room. I mean, that's the right width for the seats in the back. Um, really, it's the right width for the, I mean, if anything, I wish I would have gained about an inch, but I'm not moving all this for an inch. It's really, that's all I would gain. Um, and the other thing, too, is if we don't want to run a, a you know, a six-speed in it, I left enough room in here to put a 4L80. So, we got plenty of room for that, or, I mean, 
Maybe we want to put a Turbo 350 in it or a Turbo 400 with a big gear vendor back here. I've left the room for multiple years of changing. I mean, we can pretty much do everything with this thing. So, that's the idea behind the big tunnel. So it is all welded in, it's all structural. Obviously the car's all bolted down. Um, the tow boards, um, I'm tacking them in. I actually got them all welded in on the sides, on both sides. That's all to the original material. So the front body mounts are officially welded back in the car. They've been floating for, you know, a bit. So, nothing fancy you guys saw me. I just did a couple bends here. I mean, it's just like a bend and a bend, and I'm just tacking them in. Um, spot tacking them in, we'll seam seal it up, and then um, we plan on just spreading, um, it's going to be a Raptor liner, spray Raptor liner in here, and that, all this is going to be covered in Raptor liner anyways, so it'll just cover all the little cracks and creases and stuff anyways, it'll make it pretty watertight. Um, again, it's just a rat rod, it's, it's a little bill, just, just an old rat rod, so um, should be pretty cool. Uh, I gotta finish welding in this guy here, and then I'm gonna, you know, cut the top for this, get this welded in, and uh, once I'm happy with all of this, I'll probably work on really the floors next. I might do that. Um, probably drill for the seat on this side first before I cover the floors up. But yeah, then I can floor it back to here, um, flat floor it to here, and then from here. We're going to start our transition for the seats and have to work through all of the for the link bars and everything because that's the other trick is just you see how high they are back there well i got to make that work with seats i mean it's not necessarily the easiest so um but yeah i'm working on that we're gonna oh the other thing too we're gonna treat you with we're gonna put a little roll bar in this thing you know for rolling i think they should guess what they think the seats came out of Yeah, but that's later. Yeah, once we... They, they haven't seen them yet. Yeah, once we... When they see them... Once we show them, I think they need to guess. They need to guess what the seats are? Like, what they're out of. But they haven't seen them. Well, when we show them. Okay. Maybe they should guess what seats we're going to use before we show them. I guess they could do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> we bought seats. Cheap. They came, they came out of another... Car. Car. They did come out of a car, and they match. Yeah, front and back. Match. Mm -hmm. And we only have that much space to work with. Should we give them a hint? No. At least the, no, at least the grouping, like the group manufacturer of the vehicle it came out of. No. The red. And gray. There you go. Okay, enough of me talking. So, that's the idea behind this. So, 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 so! God, I say so a lot. Sorry. So! <laughs> we did work through the steering, and I want to walk you through that real quick. Because there's not a lot here. This is the obviously the original steering, you know, with the, you know, blinker, 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 blinker. The thing that no one here in Alabama uses, this is called a directional right here. This is for telling people what direction you're going. Okay, the turn stick, whatever you want to call it, just use it. When you're gonna go right, use it. Sorry, a little thing. Um, the throttle pedal actually from the wagon fits right here. Okay, so it actually fits really nice right here. It's perfect because what we're worried about is not having space for pedals because of this guy. Okay, that's really really low compared to most cars. But with the pedal here, there's actually plenty of room to put the brake pedal here and the clutch pedal here. So I don't know what we're going to use for pedals yet because I haven't really looked at what I'm going to do and what I have room for. But we're definitely going to hang some pedals in this area for brake and clutch. So I'm excited. That all works. Um, so steering, obviously it's in the stock location. And you guys are going to be blown away by this. I mean, this is mine. Okay. Look at this. No, don't get too close. My welds are not that nice. I haven't cleaned them up yet. Um, so stock shaft, what we did is we shortened it, okay? We did, we cut out all the um, selectomatic stuff that you'd use for the, you know, park neutral thing. And uh, 
reslid the collar, which gave me more shaft, and then we had to put an extension on the shaft, and then we put this awesome little yoke um, U joint, and look, it goes right into a Camaro. I mean, how much better? How much better is that? I mean, it's like, like that. I mean, it's, I would dare say it's made for it. I mean, I did have to do a little little configuring in here to redo the shaft and everything, but it was really easy. Uh, I mean, I was gonna record it, and next thing I know, I had it done. And I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to record this. But literally, it's a stock shaft, shortened up, with an extension sleeve, and uh, and I got a, a U-joint to fit. That simple. And then I just gotta clean it up a little bit, where I, where I weld it together. Yeah, so you could probably almost even use like a universal aftermarket column and do something very similar. Yeah. With a short little shaft on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, I was pretty impressed. It's all that dirt. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, it must be for me pounding on it and stuff. Or cutting stuff or? No, probably. I don't know. Just dirt falls out of every inch of this car. Still. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now I'm just gonna finish welding that piece in, and then eventually we'll build a new firewall for it. Um, but yeah, everything's good. I got all this mount all welded back into the new kick panels. The new kick panels are nice and solid, unlike the old ones. Um, and originally, you know, the brakes were put down here. That's why this is all this space is so big, because the brakes were actually in here originally with the down pedal. That's how. They designed these, so it's actually technically a ton of room. I mean, there's a ton of room to run headers down through there. We're not, but there is. I mean, there's a lot of room for a lot of activities in this car, for future whatevers. So, I'm pretty excited about all that. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the steering. Nothing, nothing too exciting. So, I'm gonna get back to work and uh, do a little welding. Uh, Zach can record if he feels like it. And then uh, we're getting some measurements. Zach's going to work on getting that halo bar ready because that needs to go in before the floors. And I'm going to get ready and cut up this. save on this, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to remove it. I mean, we can save on it if you want. You want me to cut it here. 
We save on this. What do you think, Zach? Yeah. I mean, how's the cardboard back there from the original? I mean, I don't know what we're gonna do with it. Take a nap. I put my face on that. But anyways, it's gotta go. But we'll save it. We'll hang it on the wall. It'll be a memorial for the a memorial. No, it ain't dying. Whatever. You guys know what's gonna be. So I'm gonna hand this to Zach. Here you go, Zach, that's for you. Save that, make sure you put that in a safe location. And now I'm gonna go ahead and finish trimming out this panel. Um, Cause I gotta build all this in and I gotta cut these back. So once I, um, let me get this cut out of here and I'll have Zach come back in and I'll show you what I'm gonna do for this section right in here. Sound like a plan, Zach? Yeah. Okay, so let me get this one chunk chopped out. Okay. So, I obviously got rid of all that because we're going to make a new piece that goes up over so there's no sense keeping, there weren't any reason to keep any of that. Um, so what I did was I made up this mock piece right here and this pretty much gives me, I need a flat for the seat to hook to in the front. The seat does taper up a little bit but my other problem is, is, is this bar. Normally in a car like this you don't have this bar. You know, it's spring up underneath the car. So there's nothing above the frame. The original seat came right down here like this across. And the original seat had this angle in it and sat right in here. Well, obviously, you know, there's a problem here. So either we lower the car, it lifts the person in the back up, or we modify the floor to accept it. So with the seat bottoms we're using that you guys still haven't guessed correctly on, um, I'm going to, I think I can make this work. From my engineering standpoint, I think it works. But what I'm, my plan is, so it kind of lays in here like this. See? And it clears all this up under here. Okay. Plus this is all the way up now. And technically it should never be that high. We should be about that much below that. So if I'm clear here, I should be clear all the way down through. And this clears all my suspension here. It gives me, you know, some pieces. I still gotta work in that. So what my plan is, is I gotta work these into it somehow too. So I'm gonna cut these down. So this piece fits up in there and I can just weld it across there and I can weld it across here. And then I can weld this down to this. Now I've tied this inner, this inner structure back into the car and then I can cap all of this back into this rocker piece. And now I virtually tied this corner back in that if you remember in the videos earlier, there was nothing in this corner but a big hole. So I think that's gonna work. And being that we're so high up, we're actually into real steel again. Crazy, I know. Um, I, I think this is gonna work. I'm not sure how I'm gonna tie it into the center yet. I'm working through that in my head as I'm cutting. Um, it'd probably be smart of me if I, you know, drew some of this out maybe and what have you. But you know, I'm more of a off the cuff type of guy. Just kind of go with it. If it don't work, I cut it again. It's, you know, it's more my style. I call myself. Freestyle. What do you think, Zach? Is that me? That's one way to put it. Freestyle. No one really knows what's going on in this crane in the line. I just kind of go with it. So, like I said, I'm going to draw this line, and it's not perfect, nor does it need to be. Or is it somewhat close? So that's pretty much where we want to be. And how I'm going to judge this cut here is I'm just going to take it above the rust. That's pretty much how I'm going to mark this one out. So I know I want it right about here. Is that right here? So 
So I determined this line first by sight. I eyeballed it. And I gave it the straight on look like this. Okay. And, and then I also went above the rust. Okay. So I'm, I'm virtually just above the rust like this. Because there's the rust hole right here. And by the looksy, I can make that work. It's pretty scientific right there. I do say so myself. What do you think, Zach? It's pretty scientific. That's how you do it, right? Not really. Now, what we're going to do now is cut this all out. We're back still. Okay, lay this in here. And that's precision right there, I would say. It's basically perfect. Now I'm gonna have to go a little higher from what I'm seeing. Of course, I just completely destroyed this blade. So there, now I think it's time to um, build the um, build the piece to go in there. Now what I don't know is how I'm going to install the piece. I'm probably going to have to put air in the suspension. Yeah, probably. But yeah, there you go. So now we're going to build these pieces. They're going to look like this, but two feet long. And they're going to go in here. And then i got to do some structure work in here, because these are just, you know, flippity-floppity out here. So once I know where all this is at, I can cut them and do whatever i got to do in here. Whew, what are you recording me doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Ah, I'm bending steel that's too thick for my bender. Lifesaver. Right now, these money bead rope. For this particular project, we don't need beads. You're not know, gonna see him with the spram with undercoating and headliner and paint. Headliner and paint, pretty much. Kind of wasting my time. I mean. It's rugged. I mean, you're not going to fall through the floor. How are you, Zach? He fell through the floor before, so. The well, sad thing is, the floor probably started off with this thing, too. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, they used to put steel on these cars. That's why it can sit in the woods for 25 years. You can go put a new car in the woods for 25 years. Won't be a car left. Yeah. Just plastic. Big heap of plastic. Measure twice, bend once. Did you know I said that, Zach? I didn't. You didn't? 
That's because I didn't say that. I say that. See how close we are. record the whole thing, huh? Yeah. May cut some of this out in post, but, you know. What's that? Might cut some of it out in post, but, you know. We'll see. I like a good post car. I'm kind of a post car guy. They don't leak as bad. Huh? They don't leak as bad. I don't afford them back there. It's weird. Never thought I'd be a four door guy. Yeah, here I am. All you own is four doors. Living the dream. Four, one four door at a time. This piece. Should look similar. I'd say it looks pretty similar. What do you say, Zach or Andy? Yeah. Not bad. So now I guess what we'll do is we'll go lay it in there. I'll make some marks like I did last time and uh, do the old cutting. And if it all cuts good, then uh, should be done with that pattern. Get all this cut in, and then we'll we'll cut into this thinner stuff. We've got some sh some sheet metal in this bad boy. in it and uh, I guess call this one good for now. Yes. It should be fine. It should look like this one. Or not. So that's fine. It's gonna work, Zach. Okay, guys. Um, we got the side panel made over here, which looks just like this side panel here. 
it's the same look. It's actually thinner sheet metal. And uh, we bent a couple of things in it for the step of the seat uh, platform. And if you look over here, so we got this one welded in. Uh, and you see how it tied that whole, this whole piece back together. So we tied this piece back into this piece which, that we welded in, the crossover, which is all tied back to the middle. So now really this whole section's back together, minus this one corner, and I'll cut a little square piece for in here, and I'll weld it down through here, weld it back into here, and around all of this, and that'll seal this in, and we officially have a corner over here now. Because if you remember before, this whole corner was basically deleted on. So uh, this one should work good. I have not tried the seats yet. I'm scared. But we will be soon enough. Um, after I get that side done and stuff, I gotta cut these clips back um, and a little bit of hammer and hammer action. And we might bring the seat parts in here and uh, see how badly they fit. You might have to be short to sit back here. But I mean, I, I'm not gonna sit back here, so it really don't matter to me. It'll have seats. It's better than no seats. You just might have to sit like this. With your knees in your face, too. No, no, no. You're in the whole room. You got to seats are way there. You got all this room. And you'll be able to hang on to this bar. It'd be like safety. It's a safety bar. It's like a roller coaster. <laughs> It'd be like a roller coaster back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we we're still in the 50s, we could put an ashtray right here. Because they would want one right here. Mm -hmm. You know? It's, Everyone, every position needs an ashtray back in the 50s. Well, there's two in the front, one for him and one for her. Oh. Uh, yeah, so came, this came out really good. Um, obviously, um, there's a bunch of grinding, just knocking the heads back. And like I said, we're gonna do a bunch of woodwork in here and, and stuff afterwards. So honestly, it don't matter that it's a little bit rough, because it, it, it's, all, it's all gonna be good once we undercoat everything. You're not gonna see any of it. I mean, it'll be good. It'll be a lot better than patching what was here. Put it that way. So, she's almost structurally sound in the middle. Now, if I get that done, we cut the two front pieces in, and uh, we'll have floors back to here. And I'll be itching to, I'll be itching to go through the trunk here pretty quick. Have this little compartment done, and Zach needs to get his rear end in here and do some work. Dad's almost done all his work in here. The fabrication. And get it all ready for some paint. Yeah. You need to get it all painted. It's waiting on you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. I think she's starting to come together now. It's starting to look like something. I think even Zach can see it now. Probably not. <laughs> Zach sucks at seeing stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be good. The Holly Dash is temporary. Oh, yeah, we haven't even shown them. Yeah, this is the Holly, yeah, the Holly Dash goes there. That's the Holly Dash. 3D printed version of it. We'll have room for other stuff there. And then the, uh, the Terminator will actually be mounted in front of it on that. All the wiring will be in front of that whole area. There's a whole bunch of room. And that still leaves room if we decide to put vintage air in this old girl. Oh, yeah. She may be an old rat rod, but she's probably going to end up with air. Because I live in the south. And I like driving my cars in the summer. I'm not completely sure where I left off the other day. That's what happens when you work on something, and then you go work on something else, and then you come back and work on something else, and then you come back to the project you started on a few days ago. So I'm just going to take off from here, and what I'm missing is what I'm missing, I apologize, okay? But we did get the back all in, and I know we're guessing seats, and I think you guys should have commented that by now. And uh, by the end of this video, you, you'll get to see what the seats are. That'll be, that'll be the end of the video. So I'm thinking. But, we got, did get all this tacked in, and it's looking fine. Fine to dine. Now, this may not be everyone's cup of tea, but this is my cup of coffee, okay? Now, we did manage, we've, we've basically, you know, that's almost there now again. Right? I think it's been hooked on the car in probably 15 years. It is now. But I put some bracing in, I even welded all this back in, back in through here. Now, there's going to be something to do underneath, I get it, okay? I haven't done all the cutting and all the trimming underneath. I'll, I'll do that afterwards, okay? We're worried about what we can see on the top right now. 
So now I just cut a new piece that's going to come up here, over here, and down there. It's going to box all this in, leaving me room for, you know, doing some work up here because we still going to get shocks in here and all that other crap, okay? So we just made that piece over there on the table and uh, maybe we'll just stick you on the little tripod right in the center of this big old console and Zach and I will put it in and I'll tack all that in because once that's in, I can make my other brace that's going to go up into here which will hook me onto here and then uh, I can do a little drawing on this piece and we can pow close the cockpit off now let's go with some I know with some patching to do and then patches I'll probably do maybe from underneath or maybe I won't do them at all maybe it'll be the smoke exit hole but uh my goal is to get this in get the seats down I want to see what it looks like with seats in it okay don't you guys so I thought so Zach, go ahead and put them fellas and fellettes on the old center console and let's get our piece and slam her in so we're going to kind of snake it in over top of all this crap there really isn't that much room it means we almost got to bend it like this It's up on that right <clears throat> What's she caught on? Right. Let me give it a tap, okay? nice if I do say so myself I basically do let's slide you under here let me see if I can kind of show you what we got going on here but yeah say look now I just gonna weld this all in and uh, let's walk around the back real quick and uh, back up here so there's all that this ties all this in. I'll make up, have to make up some panels in here, and then obviously I gotta, you know, tie all of this in to where the fuel cell is. But we'll we'll work on this after. Let me get this one tacked in, and then the seat back on so we can finish the cockpit. I'll move on to the trunk later. Get too old for this. Okay. As you can see, we made up the last piece here and uh, got it all in here so I'm just gonna tack this piece in and then uh, I mean I got some fillers and stuff to do after but I'm not worried about that I'll get this welded in then we're gonna wipe out the floor and uh, we'll bring the seats in here next and we'll get the seats in here that's what I've been waiting for really okay. so it's your final time to guess yeah your final time to guess because when we come back next time we're gonna be putting seats in Does this help? You have to come out of now? Come on. You should know. Okay. Well, the back seats fit really pretty well. I mean, I know it don't look like they do currently at their current state, but these bolt right in. Zach's already done, done all that. He's got them bolted in. So these fit perfect. Okay. We're going to do a little trimming. We're going to do some trimming on the bottom because if you know what they come out of, there's a big hole there where they sink in. So we cut all that off. They sit right down in just like they're supposed to on that piece, okay? I know that they're a little off here, but in the car that they come in, they're off too, believe it or not. Um, not quite this much, but they're still off. 
and honestly, once it's all wrapped together and everything's painted in, it's going to be just fine. The problem is it's way too high, as you can, you know, basically tell with, you know, this right here. So, like we modified the bottom, we're actually going to take this, this seat apart right here, and we're going to shorten the seat belt right about in here. Kind of do something like follow this up to here and bring this across. Now drop the seat down to here, which will bring this down perfectly to here to meet our back. So it's pretty simple. I mean, there's a piece of wood in here, so we just gotta come in here, and uh, I mean, really, you just you can just release the fabric. So I just release the fabric, and uh, now that the fabric is out. We can just come in here and cut this plastic back like this, and cut this seat foam back, and then we can just pull this this fabric back up here, and then just reattach it up here, and poof. We have ourselves a fitting back seat, and then we got to get rid of the latches and put a little bracketry, and because there is some steel right here that we're gonna have to cut. But we'll just take the fabric off, do our cutting, get it fitting, put our back on, and uh, it's gonna be perfect. Because then it'll be down more about like right about here is where it'll end up at. All this will be gone. It'll be sitting down, and uh, we'll get rid of obviously the seat buckle things. So uh, the back seat's gonna be perfect as soon as we. Uh, you know, take it apart and do a little modifying, but it's not bad, okay? So if you haven't figured it out yet, and you give us a minute, we'll put the front seats in. We'll give you the whole show. What she's just gonna really look like. You're gonna be pretty impressed. And remember, the inside is gonna be painted. You know, we're gonna do, you know, Raptor liner for floors. So that way we don't do carpet. We'll just do floor mats. And that'll seal up a lot. And then we're gonna do all this console member out of wood and leather. So we'll make a nice wooden console and then wrap it all in leather, probably oh. white leather. Pleather, fake leather. It might be diamond stitch leather, we don't know. We'll go to the fabric store, find the cheapest stuff on the rack and wrap our wood with it, okay? And then we'll put it here. We're not sure, maybe red, maybe white. We'll have that vote later, okay? That'll be all the center console. So all this ties in really nice. So now we just got to go to the front, so you give us about five seconds of your time, and we're going to put the front seats in. Well guys, how about now? If you guessed a fourth gen Camaro, you're correct. To be specific, I think these are what? What do we say? 95 to 97? 96, Someone 97 there. in that general area. So yeah, if you said 4th Gen Camaro, you are correct. But look how good these things look in here. Plus you got the, you know, American Powertrain shifter, six speed right here. You got the seat. I mean, it's got, the well, seats are barely bolted in, so I'm not to go easy here. And pull my pants up, because I'm sagging, because this is how it goes. So I gotta go in easy, because the seats are not bolted in the front. But I'll give you the, the full adjust of it. Actually, I'm back a little bit far, to be honest with you. You're coming out a little bit. So there, look at that, guys. I mean, I didn't be like, burn, 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 Right? It's like Fast and Furious. I got myself at 1100 speed. That's right. Ow. Nice Tremec 6 speed. So now, like I said, we do, uh, this is gonna come up right here. So we have a nice little armrest right here. Two cup holders. I mean, it don't really get much better than this. Yep. Seats are super comfy, everything's nice and straight. Life is good. So, I do believe the cockpit's done now. Now we're still gonna do a little firewall work and we're gonna tie the trunk together. But we'll do that in another video. So I'm sure this video is already at like 4,800 minutes long. And uh, I'm super excited. I mean, the bars look good. We can do seat belts off from those. Really, these are just here for aesthetics. I mean, technically, it's a six-point cage when it's finished. But, you know, we're not really caring about that. It's just more of a, it's a cool ability of this car, what we're after. But look, I mean, she's, she's all floored up. I can sit in it. It's pretty nice because you guys remember the first video. If you don't remember the first video, go back and watch it. 
It'll be in the upper corner if Zach remembers. And uh, this thing was a stinky old rotten pile of junk. But she's really coming into her now. I'm, I'm really getting excited for this car. Too bad Zach's gonna drive it most of the time. I mean, I'll, I, I will, I will a few times here and there. But, I mean, Zach's gonna drive this thing more than probably me. So I'll be driving the 55, which is, you know, up there. Motor's almost done. We'll be putting that thing in. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're gonna do some cruising. Should be good. But yeah, I'm excited. Um, I think the floors came out great. Like I said, once once they're all cleaned up, seam sealed, and all that's done, uh, they'll be beautiful. I mean, all the heat wrap and stuff in them, you're not going to see any of it. I mean, I don't really care that they're flat. Uh, I think they're fine. We've actually worked through the gas pedal. All oh, it's not in here, but the gas pedal, this perfect amount of room. Your leg kind of sits here. It's actually kind of comfy. It's like a, it's like racing days. You sit right here, gas pedal be right here. You'll have clutch brake right here. Plenty of room for all of it. See, it's perfect. I mean, I got big old clonkers, so have some room in the foot box is pretty necessity. But yeah, I think um, I'm done in here. Zach has to come in here now and start doing some cleanup, getting this thing all ready for paint inside. And I'll move on to the trunk, get that tied in with the fuel cell, and then uh, I guess I'll probably pull the motor out, do the firewall up right quick, and uh, patch like 400 holes. I'll move on to the body. We'll patch some holes in the body and then send her out and we'll paint the inside, get it all done, and we'll uh, start on the outside. But I've babbled enough. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the um, floor video. And I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be doing next. It'll be a video of something. Yeah. I can promise you that, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to have to call my wife and have her come out here and look at this. She might be pretty happy with this. Well, cool. Peace out, guys. Have a good week.